can't, it can't, the shutter speed isn't good enough. <laughs> oh, hang on, you're supposed to have it on the shutter speed 60 though. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. <laughs> um. That's how you do it. Welcome, if you're new, my name is Megan and I talk badly about books, essentially. As you can probably tell by, we're sitting on the bed today, by the way, because we want to be comfy. As you can probably tell by the title of this video, this is essentially how to read more. I went from reading one book in 2017 to 15 in 2018 and only just, like I read my last book on the last day of the year. And then as I'm filming this, I've currently read 60 books this year, but I'm filming this like three weeks before it's going to go up. So who knows what I'll be at by the time this video is up. It'll probably be whatever's in the title. I want to talk about essentially how I did that. The majority of my growth has been this year, but having that middle year between 20, you know, having 2018 where I read 15 was like essential. I don't think you can go from reading one to reading 60. Do you know what I mean? I think you need that, that time to like get back into reading. I've said before, I read a lot when I was younger. I read all the freaking time. I would read a book a day, easy. When I did, I think it was GCSEs. I blamed Tom previously. <laughs> I was like, when I got into a relationship and started uh, being in love. Um, <laughs> Ew! I stopped reading, but I think it was GCSEs, which was like, a, you know, just before him. But it's, you know, it's difficult in my mind. I don't actually know when I stopped reading properly. So I'm just gonna talk a little bit about how I did that. Whether you are a booktuber who reads 100 books a year already, or whether you are, you know, someone who barely ever reads, I think these tips will work for you and help you to find more spaces where you can you know, read more books and more ways in your routine that you can read more books. I was talking about this video with my friend Elisa, who was one I went to um, Jess Phipps book launch with. If you haven't seen that, I'll link it up above and down below. And she was like, you should tell them all about that website you use to, to track what books you've read. And I was like, do you mean Goodreads? And she was like, yeah. And I was like, they're all gonna know what Goodreads is. <laughs> they're all gonna know. But if you don't, like Elisa, Go on Goodreads, make a Goodreads account and set a reading goal. Set an achievable reading goal. I mean, even if you have Goodreads, I would recommend setting an achievable reading goal that you're going to hit like in October because then you feel good about yourself, you know? Then you'll feel like, I've crushed it. I think it's, that's good psychologically. Then you won't be like 10 books behind either. My reading uh, goal this year was 20 because I thought I was only going to read like 20 books. <laughs> I was like five more than last year sounds good. So yeah, I'd recommend picking a achievable goal because it hasn't been stressing me out. I think I, if I had been stressing me out, I am going to set a bigger goal next year. I think I'll probably set like 70 or something like equivalent to what I read this year. But anyway, you don't care. Let's get into the video. My first tip would be to really figure out what you love reading and what you really want to pick up, not just what booktube is hyping up at the moment. I think it can be really difficult to separate what you feel like you have to read, what you feel like you have like a duty to read and what you actually want to read. I know I do, if, unless you take the time to sit down, look at your TBR and think, right, what here really, really excites me? then I think it can get lost in, well, people also they like this and booktube likes this, yada, yada, yada. You know what I mean? I think it can get lost if you don't take that time to really, really sit down and think about that. I'm lucky that a lot of my tastes um, align with a lot of like booktubes generally, but there's definitely ones that don't. And there's definitely a lot of books sitting on my TBR that I feel like I should have read by now <laughs> that I haven't, that necessarily, you know, aren't necessarily my kind of books, but, I do want to read them eventually. So for me, definitely more like, I don't want to call it literary fiction, but like average fiction um, is is a lot of what like I like to read on my own that so BookTube hasn't hyped up. BookTube is very fantasy focused, I feel like, and that's like a good thing. Like I like fantasy, but um, it's not something that I picked up beforehand. I do read a lot of fantasy now. Uh, if you've seen my five favorite books of the year, so far video, I think three of them were fantasy books. So I do enjoy it, but it's something that's really new to me. And if you're not a big booktube person, if you just clicked on this video, then 
I think it's difficult when there's a lot of books as well. If you're like a general book fan, you pop into your water zones fairly often, but you don't watch us people talk about books online that often. There's a lot of books that like water zones or like just the general UK or US community will hype up. Do you get what I mean? Like normal people by Sally Rooney in the UK. Everyone's read it, everyone loved it. Apart from me. And I think it's difficult to separate yourself from them too. So what I'm really saying is figure out who you are. No pressure. It also really helps to find booktubers who are very similar tastes to you. I think it's a very special thing. There's a lot of brilliant, brilliant booktubers on here, but not all of them are going to have the same reading taste as you. And I'm not saying only watch the ones with the same reading taste as you, because then that's boring, but really, really pay attention to what the ones with the same reading taste as you are recommending because that's where you're going to find the recommendations that apply to you most right that's common sense but i thought i'd say it anyway to make myself sound intelligent so kind of linked to this is that when you find a book that you really enjoy that's brought you out of your slump that's making you want to love reading again read other books kind of like that kind of just capitalize on that love of reading that that book has ignited in you and i think of it as like riding the wave you know, like when you're like kayaking, I kayaked the first time this summer, so I'm going to use it to my advantage. <laughs> and um, yeah, I kayaked, right? And when you're, in, when you're kayaking, you're, <laughs> when you're kayaking, you, um, you, you <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying this. When you're kayaking, you'll be like paddling, paddling, paddling. And I was doing it with Tom, like we're in the same boat and you'll be hitting like a good stride and you're using that wave and that momentum. And then when you lose it, you've got to start all back over again and build that up again. So what I'm saying is when you hit that like good paddle, you hit that like whew, good movement, keep on going and read other books like that that could maybe help you capitalize on that. So if you loved a historical fiction, read another historical fiction maybe, or read another book by that author who really liked their writing style. I'm not saying I only ever read that genre, but maybe for the next one or two books, read something very similar to that. I used to have a very strict TBR, like I planned out the order of the next 10 books I was reading in what order. It wasn't like a February TBR or whatever, it was just like in whatever next 10 books I read, this is the order. I found that transitioning more to mood reading and just picking up what I was feeling like has really helped me fall back into love with reading again, I guess. Nowadays when I have a channel, I do have to be a bit more strict to myself and read certain books for videos and I'm becoming a bit more self-aware of thinking I'm gonna be in the mood this month, later this month to read this book and so I can kind of plan it out that way. Whereas beforehand I wasn't, it was just like, just putting my books in a random order. But yeah, reading what I'm feeling like, what I'm loving in that moment has really helped me read a lot more this year. A lot of booktubers also have videos that um, are like, if you like this, you'll like this book. And they can be really helpful as well, finding recommendations that are really kind of personalized to you if you manage to find one with a book you really loved. Because I think it, you know, as I said before, it's helpful to have booktubers with similar tastes to you. But it really is like a step up from that is if you liked this book, you will like this one. Because it's a direct comparison, a direct link between a book you loved and another book. And I think they're really, really helpful. So they're definitely a good place to start out if you're looking. My next tip would be to branch out into other formats other than just physical books. For me, that is particularly audiobooks. That's what I'm gonna be talking about now. So I use Scribd instead of Audible. My link will be down below to join Scribd. And I think we get... <laughs> I don't think we're in the description. Someone gets a month free. I think you get two months free. Fuck me if I know, I have no idea. But I use that link to join because I think it helps me out. Maybe. Who knows? <laughs> but Scribd is really great in the sense that it, it's, it's kind of unlimited books. Um, Whereas Audible is like one a month or like you pay a ridiculous amount per book. But Scribd you get a lot of choice. And another great thing is that you can, you know, listen to the first couple chapters of a lot of different books and then figure out what you want to read rather than having to commit to one like with Audible. Scribd is really great in that you have that variety. This isn't sponsored. They have no idea I exist. But... <laughs> 
I love Scribd. Another thing that's great about Scribd is they also have ebooks for some books. So there's been times when I've been listening to the audiobook and then I'll pick up the ebook and listen along or just read the ebook for a bit. Um, and that really helps speed up the process as well because sometimes I find with audiobooks, I'll get into this in a second, but I listen to it in very specific times. And so my reading of them can become a bit limited, whereas my physical book is like my main book. And when it does have the ebook, it helps to kind of break that divide. I don't know what I'm doing. Helps break that divide a little bit for me. I, as a new student, walk a lot of places, so audiobooks have been really helpful for that. Also, when I'm doing certain chores like cooking dinner, doing the washing up. Um, I don't do the washing up. I'm lying to you, Tom does that. <laughs> but when I'm doing chores, audiobooks are a really good way to use that kind of dead time when you're doing chores or you're walking somewhere like. Uh, you know, at least half an hour of my day is taken up walking back and forth to uni, if not a lot more, um, or going to the gym or wherever I'm going. So audiobooks are really useful for that as well. I've noticed a massive increase in the amount of books I've been able to read. When I introduced audiobooks, it also helped me not be afraid to implement some larger physical books into my TBR because that I know that with audiobooks, I can sort of... I have a... <laughs> I think I'm the biggest of Trump. Yeah! I really, I, that was, I don't think it showed up on camera and in real life, but I really lost my train there. I've never like spoken faster than I can think, but I did there. I found that um, I wouldn't be afraid knowing that I could make up the difference with some shorter audio books when I was doing other things. So it's really helped me just on the whole with my reading as well. My next tip would be to schedule a time each day to read. Now, a lot of people set page goals. For me, that wouldn't work because A, it would stress me the fuck out and B, because it would stress me out because my days are very all over the place. Some days I have loads of time to read, some days I have no time to read. So it's really all over the place and trying to read the same amount of pages every day would not be good for me. It would not be good. So that's not um, sustainable for me. But what is, is kind of setting time goals or times in the day in which I will read. That's much better for me. So take a look at your day each day and figure out where you have time to read. Say maybe to yourself, I will read for at least an hour tonight or I'll read half an hour of my audiobook on the way to work, uni or school. And then I'll read 45 minutes after dinner or something like that where you've got an actionable goal, but it's not too much pressure like you have those 45 minutes you have that hour you have that hour and a half and then it's done in my opinion being more flexible with this works because we are bitches on the go with lots of commitments or not <laughs> in my opinion it helps you fit around each day because each day is different each day throws up different challenges different different you know schedules and for me, just trying to look at each day and trying to set at least an hour of reading in whatever capacity aside um, has really helped me to, to read more. Because even if I'm not reading loads, I'm reading something, you know? Really, if you're gonna do this, dedicate yourself to that time. If you say, I'm gonna read from half seven to half eight, read from half seven to half eight. It's really important that you stick to your goals and dedicate yourself to them when it comes to this. Otherwise, that hour can escape from you. And I am trying to be better at not going on the old phone um, whilst I'm on social, whilst not going on social media whilst I'm reading because that sucks up your time a lot. I used, recently downloaded the book, uh, app Bookly, which has been pretty helpful. I'm not like obsessed with it yet, but it tracks your reading, your time, and then you put how many pages you read in that session in and it tells you how many pages you've read per minute or how many minutes per page. And um, that was really helpful. It does have a limit of 10 books. Now, can anyone tell me if that's, if I delete a book, does that count to the 10? Because I have no qualms about deleting all my books after I've read them, after I've got the, the graph it puts, I'll put, um, I'll try and put a graph up here of what like, what the graph is that it makes. If I delete the book, does it still count to the 10? Let me know. <laughs> And my last tip would be to mix up your genres and lengths. If you are faced in a month with seven 450 page books, you're going to be A, bored shitless, and you're not going to want to read because you're going to be a bit intimidated. Variety, as they say, is the spice of life. So 
mix it up boys. A few smaller books in there can actually make things seem more doable and it might mean that you read more books in the long run because of that momentum you're able to build up. So there we have it, that is all my tips for reading more and how I was able to read much more this year than previous years. Let me know how um, you have done in the previous years, how your reading has grown or changed. So if you read loads more books last year than you'd be able to read this year and why or if you've read loads more this year etc. I'd like to hear the differences between all of our reading lives. <laughs> yeah, as always, thank you so much for watching to the end. If you've made it to the end, we love you. And no, really, really thank you because, um, it, yeah, as much as I joke about, it does mean, oh, I'm not good at being vulnerable on camera. <laughs> um, it does mean so, so much to me, all the support I've been getting on here for the past couple months. So big love. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you so much. And I hope you all are well and I will see you soon with another video. Bye.